Hello and welcome to Market Current Affairs. I'm Andrew Sachs McLeod from Leaprate. Joining me in the studio today is really a, a top industry figure that we don't really need to introduce. He's very famous in the forex, binary and high-tech and gaming industry. Advocate and notary Tal Itzhak Ron of Tal Ron Dream and Company. Hello Tal. How are you Andrew? Very good, nice to see you. Thank you. I see a lot of new players in the field. Lots of people are coming and, and, and doing their best attempts to open either a forex brokerage or a binary brokerage or a casino and there are other new players uh, and other new verticals, lotteries. Many people now are trying to, the, to open a website that does uh, lottery aggregators and, uh, and lottery messengers. So everything is, is, I think, growing very big. But what I do see is the tendency of most of the players now to attempt regulation. Mm -hmm. Even regulation on a lower level or a more lighter level, what we sometimes call like a merely piece of paper, <laughs> people are trying to regulate themselves. So I think it's, it's very uh, evident that, uh, that uh, many people who, who, who are starting non-regulated are having their business plan to start and become regulated in, in a few months after, after starting their business. Mm -hmm. I see. And in terms of the, uh, the new uh, types of businesses that are becoming, coming to, to Talron Dream & Company to actually register themselves and obtain regulation and set up their whole corporate package, um, how does a, a binary options company, for example, differ in its startup in, an, in a relatively generic and populous place such as Cyprus, which is a real hub for the retail industry? Sure. Uh, how does it differ from something like a traditional B book forex brokerage, for okay. example? So it's very interesting. If, if we want to understand the history of all of this, we need to go back to May 2012. Mm -hmm. in May 2012, that was the historic, uh, that's a historic day where uh, CISEC, the uh, Cyprus Security Exchange Commission, has uh, declared binary options as a financial instrument under MIFID. Mm -hmm. Now, this placed binary options in Cyprus under the definition of a financial instrument. Now, the, the Maltese Financial Services Authority, F a a a MFSA, followed suit in quite a laconic uh, way, but they did follow suit a few months afterwards. Now, this was a historic uh, uh, act for the CISEC because what happened is that many of these uh, brokerages, binary option brokerages that soon opened afterwards, just covered themselves legally under uh, the Cyprus regime. Now, what happened in the same time is that other jurisdictions, gaming jurisdictions, classic gaming jurisdictions such as Isle of Man, took a different approach and they took binary options under the gaming and the gambling. Right. And it's interesting to see that even though that Cyprus is under MIFID, and MIFID has uh, and this uh, the directive seeing uh, binary options as uh, financial instruments. You can still see places like uh, like Netherlands, which is still part of European Union, where binary options still has some kind of controversy on, on, under which uh, 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 under which regulation does it fall. Now, if you go to Isle of Man, Isle of Man said, okay, it's it's clear that binary options are regulated as gambling. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I think um, when you look at the uh, proliferation of Cyprus-based companies or specific, not just Cyprus, but regions which have recognized binary options and other online retail, uh, um, retail platform-based uh, trading products as a financial product, have become real centers for these uh, things. So now you have over 160 uh, entities in Cyprus, many even more, even more probably. Yeah, we're speaking. If you're speaking about SIFs, about site uh, Cyprus yes. in investment firms, that's a regulated entity. But there are even more that uh, has different other types of regulation, where you have the call center or logistics center or, or technology center in Cyprus, mm -hmm. where they serve uh, uh, other companies in the structure. Exactly. That's what I was thinking of. Uh, really, really thinking along those lines is that there's so many of them now, yeah. and their really their local economy depends on it, and as does the SciSec is all built around it. Exactly. So what you have is a, a proliferation of w effectively white label companies, which exactly. all use similar technology and liquidity providers. Is there still a sustainability to open more and more and more of these binary option brands and uh, forex brands of the same kind of liquidity provider, and they're really trying to compete against each other, but they're using a similar product? It's a good question. I think that uh, I'm not I'm probably not the right one to, to answer it, but uh, I, I, th I still think that 
going to a technology provider um, for a white label, whether if you're speaking about the, for the binary mm -hmm. or for the forex, is the best thing to do uh, than buy a, a full meta quotes, MT4 server, and then have someone in house to take yeah. care of all your, uh, of your technology. And it's much more cheaper you know, because if you buy like a, a you buy a meta server, the licensing can cost you, is very high. Yeah, one hundred thousand yeah. and this kind of stuff. You can you know, we still have in our office a couple of secondhand companies right. with with a license of MetaTrader, uh, but it's you know it's it's arguably the best I think is to is to buy um, a solution that includes M MT4. Yeah, and then then that uh, service provider pays to MetaTrader and fully license the product, and then you get your MT4 for a much more cheaper uh, license. Of course, if you have much more uh, volume and you want to be the, the own of your own server, you can buy MetaTrader, and they have good service, and I think they're number one with with the, with the, with the product. Okay, yeah. M many of the people want the MT4 uh, to use, but. You, you, you still see in other providers um, MT4 clones which work actually well. It all depends on, on which, uh, which uh, market. I see many of, uh, of um, the, the audience from, from the Arab Gulf, so some of them do not need the MT4 brand. They can have like a clone of MT4. Mm -hmm. At least if, if it looks like something that you can trade, many of them can have and enjoy and get good effect and good, uh, good quality of results from something which is not an MT4. Yes, and therefore paying less, the, the brokerage pays less licensing. Exactly. Price. I think, yeah. it's in, interestingly, the um, Tao is, uh, is, is, is really a, a very prominent industry figure, knows pretty much the internal workings of most companies within the whole uh, world in terms of buying options and falling on the retail side. So really a, an important question is to, to really look at whether, let's say I'm going to, I, I, I decide one day I'm going to go and start my own uh, retail brokerage in a, a regulated jurisdiction like uh, Malta or Cyprus or even uh, Hong Kong or Singapore, some in the Far East or Australia to get an ASIC license for Australia. And I can go to a, a, a medical quote, I pay the $5,000, get myself a white label license. But it's not all as simple as that. You know, what else should I bear in mind if I were going to do something like that? Okay, so first of all, you need, uh, let, let's, let's speak about the steps. So one, one step is to choose the technology provider. You, you spoke about MetaQuote, but you can speak about, you know, if we're speaking about uh, the Forex platform, so we have Leverate and, 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 and Panda. If we're speaking about uh, uh, the binary, we have, we have Panda, we have Spot Option, Tradeologic, Airsoft, Hello Markets, uh, Tech Financials, all systems. There are many, many companies in this uh, industry. So after, after you choose your Forex or binary platform, um, then you need uh, to, to choose actually the next step. You, you need to, to decide where you want to be located physically with your employees and where, more importantly, your clients will be. Now, if you're catering for the Arab Gulf, mm -hmm. the MENA, the, you know, we're speaking about Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Bahrain, there are some very ultra high net worth individuals there are, there yeah? are. who like to play with money. That's right. Now, now, <laughs> now you need to treat them with all the respect because the, in most of these uh, countries, gambling is forbidden. It is, it is. Uh, according to Sharia law. So, so ma many of these uh, companies have, have like Islamic account and, mm -hmm. and cater specific uh, uh, under specific uh, uh, Islamic law to these uh, type of jurisdictions. Now, if you work under, um, if, you, if you cater for, for, for Arab Gulf audience, you can have two choices, one or three choices. One, to go unregulated, take uh, an Eastern Caribbean or, or other place, you know, Nevis uh, jurisdiction, the, uh, Marshall Island, there are the other yeah. places, you know, in the Caribbean or, or places where there's still, there is not enforced financial regulation. Mm -hmm. So this is why these, these places are very uh, popular. Now, then you open the bank account of that company. You have then other companies in the structure for signing of a Visa and MasterCard, for marketing and for, for clearance. But at the end of the day, you have quite a simple and cheap structure that cater for the Arab Gulf. Yes. Okay, now if you cater for the Arab Gulf, you have other options. Other options is many of the players in the Arab Gulf like the UK uh, type of doing things. So some of, some of the, my clients who work with Arab Gulf are IBs of large and well-known UK brands. Some of them are, you know, quite, quite went since what happened with the, with the Swiss franc and everything uh, 
some, some lost the, some of the credibility, but some still work and have the credibility. So they work as an IB for these well-known UK brands. And they have to be regulated by the FSA even if they're an IB. Okay, that's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, there's a difference between what formally happens and what in practice. What, what, right. In practice, I can tell you that most of the big name of the, of the uh, most of the names that you see in, in, in the trade shows also accept unregulated IBs. Uh, but they do get them signed of some of several documents right. regarding the KYC, regarding the AML, regarding that they're no, not promoting uh, the stuff in unregulated, in, in regulated, or not, not according to the law and everything. So, so that, that's that's one one that's that's um, so as we said. So, if you cater for Arab Gulf, you can either work non-regulated. You can either work like regulated with the UK license, which is quite. Rare. You can see, like, think Forex started like three years ago yes. and then r r ran really high. Now, you know, they have also FCA license. They, do. they started with Australia uh, and now they're, uh, they're going all, uh, strong on the Middle East with, with their own license in, in Dubai. So that's also another option to, to have a license in Dubai, also like Iron FX. And uh, so, so to, to summarize, you can either work unregulated, you can either work with a local regulation there in the Middle East, or work with the local uh, clients on famous worldwide regulations like, like let's say the UK FCA or like the SISEC. Yeah. Because also SISEC, if you have a SISEC registration number on authorized by SISEC, you can, you can still, uh, by paying quite a low fee, get, uh, get it acknowledged by other several jurisdictions. If you see like what eToro did, they had first uh, license in, in Cyprus yes. and uh, very legitimately had uh, listed on the website the other uh, passported uh, uh, jurisdictions that they got. That's it. You and get like an FCA, you get a passported number. Exactly. Well. Now, 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 many of the people I'm sure here in the audience know that there is an FCA number, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure all of us know that there is a difference. If you, if there's a difference. If you get into the FCA website, you can see you can see even service providers like MoneyNet, which is a very nice uh, uh, financial services that open virtual accounts and very, very effective and working highly in this industry. But you can see in a different uh, register inside the FCA, you can see different types of financial institutions. So for once, you can see someone like Finotech, which is a very you know, well-known and very highly established. Uh, uh, now, now, now they do more institutional, yes, uh, yeah. but, but they have full FCA authorization authorized by the Financial Conduct Authority. It was once the FSA, but now it's FCA, Financial Conduct Authority. And you can see in other places, like places, uh, uh, companies that did this passporting. And then you, you won't see an FCA authorization. You see an FCA registration number, and you'll, ha you'll see a note in the, in the website that it is EA authorized, like in, in world passporting. It means that it was authorized, let's say, by SISEC, mm -hmm. and then it was got a registration number in UK. But then it says, please note, this is not a, you know, a UK company. This is not authorized by FCA. It only got its number because it was authorized somewhere else in the EU and got passported inside. Yeah. Now, most of the traders do not really care about this difference. It's, it's important to understand because it's, it's different companies. I'm not saying that FCA reg uh, regulation or FCA authorization is something which is higher in, in in effect than other places. I think that some of my clients who started with FCA so it wasn't it wasn't good ROI for them. You know, F FCA sounds very nice because you're governed by the United Kingdom and it's a very uh, lucrative place. But you know, if 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 the if the obligations of a broker are much higher or much lower or much different than than, than what happens in other places. F FCA per se is not something that works for, for all, of the, all of the clients. Yeah, that certainly makes sense. And bearing that in mind, one of the last real uh, important factors I'd like to really discuss is, do you still consider that because of that, because of the, the highly packageable ability of operating in Cyprus, you can take a, 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 a tailor-made regulatory structure for the Forex and binary options industry, all the fees are fixed, it's a very, you know, Talron Dream and Company can set you up your binary options brokerage and, and uh, Forex brokerage, the whole thing is geared very uh, little bureaucracy compared to the uh, minefield that is London because it has other, many other industry sectors working. Exactly. Is Cyprus still the uh, default jurisdiction to establish a brokerage? Yes, not only even to establish a brokerage. I even we see many of the 
platforms have offices they there, do, sales indeed. reps. They do. Some of them are very nice places in Limassol. That's right. And other is there. Uh, sea Trader is there. Exactly. Uh, many, many of them are there. Yeah, and many of the oh, many of the companies that have some Israeli links, like like Spot Option, have a very nice office right. there. Uh, Hello Markets have an office there. Leverage Financial Services, uh, not so on the on the sea like the others, but right. uh, but very nice as well. Um, Cyprus, and I'm telling you as someone who is living in Tel Aviv, is still the hub for the forex and binary uh, industry. However, we still see some kind of, of advantages to, to open in other places. Mm -hmm. We see uh, places, uh, uh, in, in many people now opening uh, in, in Hong Kong. Yes. Rather in, in, in the island, they open in Kowloon, in the more ch cheaper area, and uh, the good personnel there, especially if you want to cater for, for Southeast Asia, you have, you have good quality of personnel there. Of course, there are other uh, issues to consider there, like the corporate uh, structure and, the, and also the, the taxation there. It's not, um, it's not 0% like in other places. No. Also in Cyprus, it's not 0%. It's, people think it's 0 No, it was 10% and then it was like 12.5% a few years ago. Still very low. It's still very low. Very low it's yeah. still very low. You, you, you know that even in Malta, Malta is higher than Cyprus, but then you get like a tax credit if you're an IBC. So it's, it's quite set off itself. But if you compare it to what's going on in, like in Tel Aviv and in like 26.5% yes. or what's going in London, it's still very high. So to summarize your, your, your uh, question and to summarize my answer, Cyprus will still be a hub. Uh, but we still see that uh, that the booth in Ramat Gan and uh, and Erzeliya and Tel Aviv still continues to be a hub for the personnel for for the mines Te technology development for the technology for for all the service providers. You see that everybody has everybody, a, has an office. Everybody, that's yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. Excellent. Well, it's been a pleasure to speak to you as always. Tal. Thank you. And Thank thanks you, for thanks for coming in. Thank you. That's the advocate and notary Tal Itzak Ron of Tal Ron Dreyam and Company. Uh, I'm Andrew Sachs-McLeod from Leaf Rate. Thank you for watching Market Current Affairs. See you next week. Goodbye.